This is In Boot Camp, episode 25, the last week on Saturday, July 7th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB25. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? Uh, doing quite well, but it is just too hot outside. Yeah, it's been really hot in the last week here, and it's uh, so hot that I've had to turn on the air conditioning because the dog just couldn't sleep anymore and couldn't stand it. Uh, is that how you justify it? It's yeah. all for your dog? Yeah, it's all for the dog. That's how I justify it. Yeah, well, makes sense. You're not thinking of yourself. You're thinking of your cute, precious, adorable dog. Yep, that's right. Uh, how is your uh, class going? pretty good we have two class periods left and we're completely done wow i mean that that seems like it's gone so fast uh where is time gone i don't know now that it's kind of two class periods left and i just have a few days to get this last project together i really do feel like the time is just gone yeah so speaking of that final group project how is your final group project going well, it's now a solo act, and by solo act, I mean it's your act. I, I've been bugging you like crazy for help these last couple of days chasing bugs and stringing everything together. Um, I know we talked about it in previous examples, but when I have to do something new, it kind of all breaks, and I am very, very bad about troubleshooting. Over the past week or so... Uh, you know, you've you've had uh, various error messages come up on you know different parts of your project, and usually the solution is to just read what the error message is and then think about what you've just done and kind of work in reverse from there. And that's that's a skill that you learn over time, right? I mean, you just you, you don't know how to do it until you've kind of done it a few times, and then you'll just do it naturally. So, in my defense. It does often say, like, in line 642 of something I've never wrote in something something, it caught an undefined. And it doesn't always spew back exactly what file had the undefined. That is a totally valid complaint, and that is certainly a fundamental uh, skill that you build, which is sorting through print stacks and tracebacks of various frameworks and error messages. So I need more practice. In spring, in particular, uh, the the stack traces that you can get printed out can be a thousand lines long, and it's just madness. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. But you really don't you don't have to worry about it. So, like, if it says anything that looks like you didn't write it, just ignore it. Like, just pretend it's not there. So let's let's talk about some about uh, the project. So you you've been working on it for about three or four weeks now, right? Full time, we've been working on about two weeks. But okay. we the project was announced three weeks ago, and we didn't really have an idea super formulated yet, and kind and of so, figuring out what our vision was. And so by now, you know, three weeks later, you should I would expect to sort of having a working prototype. Maybe it's not hosted externally yet or anything. Maybe it's not attached to the domain. But I would expect everybody to be able to run it locally in complete unison. That. No, no, I don't know why you'd think that. Oh, I mean, uh, three weeks seems like a good enough time period for four people on a team to have kind of work together to sort of formulate, you know, a small but runnable project, you know, in various form factors, like here's Mongo or here's uh, my SQL and, you know, here's a React app and, you know, here's an Express API app. Well, I do have one piece of uplifting news. 75% of our group members have actually cloned the repo at least once. Okay, that's that's uplifting, I suppose. Yeah. No, we still have a group member that hasn't even cloned the repo. That's pretty bad. Or pushed anything, or looked at anything, looked at code, asked what to do, uh, just complete disconnect. Yeah. So let's talk about some of your team member contributions. One person did a whole bunch of back-end and, you know, express stuff for a system that doesn't use React Router or any kind of Reactness. So in other words... Um, Nothing. Uh, that that contribution was making express routes for HTML pages and not relying on React Router with the Create React app as the front end UI. Also made a schema for SQL, and we didn't end up. I didn't actually use it. Um, we I forced them to use Mongo. Also, hilarious thing. Um, so we had a group meeting today, and nobody has figured out that I switched over to Mongo. I mean, and- is it in master? 
I did not push it to master it, well, but I told them all to look at my own. Br- I told them all to look in the better branch. Well, I understand, but like, if it's not even in developer master, like it's not real yet. A- ethical question for you: Would you ever move broken code into master? No. Yeah, so that's why I'm leaving it all in this better branch. It's better than the bad branch it was working on earlier. But I would also um, never make major changes like that without having migrated smoothly. So you make one major change, you commit it to master. You make one major change. Your project should never not be working. Yeah, I did break it. And that's why it's not in master. I'm gonna it's gonna stay out of master till it's all figured. Mm-hmm. But I just I thought it'd be bad. Like I always think of master as, you know, something that should always run. It should always... always run. But that's why you've done too much. Like you should have incrementally changed master into the form that you needed it to be in. Yeah. But that's okay. Uh what what other contributions have your have your team worked on and committed? Oh, I got a very nice link to a really nice blog. You you got a link to a blog? Yeah, about um, email verification. It's a it was a very nice blog post about how to use React and um, this Node Mailer to send an email from a Gmail account. That whoa, wait a second. Last episode, you told me all about setting up this mail server. What are you talking about Gmail for? <sighs> I. Surrender. I do not get it. I misfollowed the guide and I made as so I'm not just the developer, I am also the team manager somehow. And I decided that it was a feature that it's not critical to the app. It's not our big our big thing's not whether or not you verify an email or get an email thing. It's um it's like extra fluff. And we we wasted enough time on it. So I just use this Node Mailer to. We made a new Gmail account. Use Node Mailer. Everyone's got the password for it, and we just that's how we verify people's emails now. I see. That was a good choice, considering how much work it is indeed to set up a mail server. It's almost almost as if somebody told you all about how difficult it would be to set up a mail server many weeks ago. Yes, but now I have had the fun of trying it. Yes, I agree. And that is a very valuable experience. And so in the future, you will be able to recommend to your peers when they come up with the same solution that you did. Of course, I'll just make a mail server and you will say, let's use Amazon or let's use SendGrid because it's way easier. Agreed. Yep. Um, And that pretty much takes it to where we are today. So has anybody been using your GitHub issue or project tracking board? Yeah, I have. Oh, you have? Anybody uh, else? I closed three issues today. Wow, that's pretty good. Any, did anybody else close any issues yet? No, no. Nobody created other issues. Nobody closed any issues. Nobody's using the bit built-in issues of GitHub. Okay. Um, has anybody been working on your front end? Like, have they made any, like, templates or components or anything? No. No? no. Not, not um, so much? The one person said that they all have cool logos and cool pictures, and I demanded a favorite icon to be made. Um, I mean, if they're, if all they're going to do is contribute art, they might as well make a fave icon. It it, it makes it cool. Uh, that makes sense, yes. But yeah, no, that none of that's happened yet. None of that's happened. Well, so it sounds like the contributions are, are kind of slim, so I can see why that's how you've come to terms with the final group project being sort of a solo project. But I get all the XP from it then. I get all the learning experience. I'm trying to uh, trying to think, and uh, the functions are turning undefined, if that's true. So no, I don't think that's how that works. If I do everything, I get all the experience of doing it, and I feel like it makes me a better person. So you certainly do get all the experience of doing it, but the problem is it has now been shrunk from what a four-person team could accomplish to now what a single-person team can accomplish and that's not to say that a single person team cannot accomplish great things uh obviously you can and have but it is much more difficult to work alone than it is with others if they're also doing work now of course your team may not have been doing work so that is uh, a problem of, of its own yeah and just one funny thing is two of the people dropped out of their employment status to work on school full-time right and and to to be clear, your schooling, your your boot camp is part time as as is. Yeah, it's a well, ten hour in class commitment, 
and then you know maybe a rough you know 10 hour out of class commitment Today, I showed up to class significantly late uh, because normally I go to work, class, work. But mm -hmm. today um, was a kind of a light day at work. And so I just decided to go to class an hour and a half late and just not go back to work afterwards. That's fair. And it ended up working out pretty nice. But this was my last Saturday class. So uh, no more day stuff. It's both the following classes will be night. And it's much easier for me to make the night classes than the for day sure. ones. Yep. I bet that'll be a relief when you stop having to go to class regularly. Your your some of your time will open back up again. Yeah, because right now, the with the highways being worked on and as they are, it's just it's frustrating to get around town right now. You know, it, it is funny. I've often joked to people at work. You know, I can kind of get here faster in the winter than in the summer. It's not That's a good true. sign. It's very bad. More roads are open. More roads are open, and there's less people driving. I mean, last Saturday they had 35 shut down, and I had to take 280 to get to class, yep. and that's that's miles out of the way. We've talked about some of your team member contributions. Let's talk about what you've been able to do in the past <laughs> couple of weeks. Oh, oh. So I know you've been working on your mail server stuff, and you've realized recently that it's not so good. Uh, I know that you were trying to do some database stuff, and then now have recently switched to Mongo. Like, what are some of the other work that you've been working on? Um. That is a very, very good question. And I have actually had a bunch of time sinks that were more than just a mail server. Okay, so um, tell me about your time sinks. So on my laptop, I had a version of Node that was 12.0.0. And um, for some reason, I couldn't get this one exercise to work. And I tried to switch versions of Node. And so I installed it with Aptitude, removed it with Aptitude, wouldn't remove, and everything else. And I ended up having, like, three different versions of nodes in all different parts and everything else. And I couldn't actually run the thing. And so I watched it build from source for, like, 25 minutes and everything else. And so I literally wasted all that time. And so that was a lot of the time. Um... Stared at my monitor for a long time, just not knowing what to do. Um, so between all of the breaking stuff, my environment failing because I'm an idiot and all that, all I managed to do was, um, right now, all you can do in Mongo is create a new data, create a new event, say who made it, give the location as a street address and everything else, and sort by just ID. So I'm trying to add functionality right now for searching by category. Cool. So there's there's some progress. Yeah. On Thursday, even right now, I have a working front end to show. What I need to do tonight is to add the sign-in page. So remember how I told you how cool it was that we got that email verification thing working? Yeah. Um, so we have our own little Gmail and everything else to verify the email after you've created an account, and right now there is no account to sign in. So let's, so let's talk kind of about, a weird order. Let's talk about the strategy for kind of going forward to doing your presentation, right? So, like, you have to do a presentation in your group, right? Tyler said he'd make a slideshow for us. Ah, yes, the legendary slideshow. So, uh, you know, at this point, I'm thinking, like, maybe you don't even have to make a full application. Like, if you have the capability to even make it look halfway real... Maybe that's good enough. So maybe you don't even need a login system. You don't need Passport or Passport JWT. Uh, once you just hit sign in, oh, look, it just happens to work. I could totally, you know how you can hide a button to do anything. and just So just have two <laughs> fields, enter text, and then submit, which is just a link to the next route. Especially in React, right? Because they can maintain global state. You could just fake being logged in. Uh, that would, uh... That's hilarious, but it would save time. It Not only would it save time, it would also be a good exercise in smoke and mirrors and being able to articulate functionality that just didn't have time to get developed, which is a skill that you do need to have, especially in a professional development setting. Yeah, because you're telling me that um, when you're a consultant sometimes, sometimes people want something just to, like kind of like a feasibility study just to see if it's possible and that. And you're not even trying to make something that's going to last. You just need something to show for one meeting. Like you're literally working a week for just one quick meeting demo. And then they'll decide whether or not they want to put in all the money on making a real one. Exactly. And so that kind of that kind of product is like a prototype um, 
or it may be as you call it a feasibility study but we don't never we don't ever call it that that's crazy talk um a lot of the time we will make those kind of investments uh where we intentionally write code to throw away because it's simply easier to mock something up locally than it is to put something uh you know complex together on the back end yeah yeah that no, makes sense no plenty of time it's not until thursday and today is saturday I have hours and hours and hours to get this done. Plenty of time. So speaking of plenty of time, I've heard that you've had uh, spent some time looking through the GitHub Insights panel in your repository. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, so I, I am the repo owner. I can see all sorts of cool stuff on the GitHub Insights. And that was how I was able to talk. To, it, we, in a group meeting, we had a little talk about how, yeah, I pushed something up there. And I'm like, no, you didn't. And like, oh, I totally did. And I'm like, three people have cloned the repo. I can see that there have been three unique cloners. I know Tyler has, I have, and then that has. You have even cloned it. And I just got an, oh, oh, you're right. I, I made it up. Um, It's kind of fun to see how everything is done. Um, I kind of broke one of the graphs. There's a thing that shows total lines committed and total lines erased. And it's this beautiful pyramid because I put the node modules up on GitHub again. Um, I've done that before. Actually, I've done it twice in this project. Um, You've done it before and you will do it again. Everybody does it. You just have to stay vigilant. Well, here's the thing. I changed the file directories around a little bit. I moved my package JSON. I moved everything around. But I use, you know the GUI like I use the folder structure and stuff well the git ignores are not visible like they're, they're I mean they're, they're secret they're I mean it's dot git ignore like it's it's not something that's always displayed and I never remember to move it and I don't really I'm not really attention to detail when it comes to committing because it's it it's git it does everything in the background it's all you know just does it just works uh, you so don't have to think about it it's one of those back end parts of the process right yeah just you, you hit get commit get push and then you, you, it just it just happens you don't have to think about it you don't have to think about it whatsoever i mean unless and you do, then your node modules end up being online yeah not so good is it oh your uh, passwords your <laughs> everything yeah. well that, i think it's really cool i had not used the github insights like that to see who has committed or who has pulled or who has cloned that's a really cool trick that you can do, uh, although it was sort of by process of elimination, of course, but still, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then you could see by week, you could see by month, you, could, you can check it out pretty nicely. Yep. Um, you can also see traffic to the page. Somehow, I got 89 views. That's pretty good. So. So that means somebody is looking at it. It's just they're not doing anything after they've looked at it. Well, see, I'm wondering, so, so this is a public repo. There are two TAs and an instructor. Oh, I suppose they could take a look every so often if they really wanted to. I find it unlikely, but they could. Yeah. That actually... Actually, it is kind of hard to believe. Um, 89 bots is more believable. Yeah, it is, it is more believable. Yeah. But no, it's, um, it's fun. It's coming together. Um, and... I'm going to be glad when it's over because it has been, I know you say this boot camp is trivial and you could do everything and you could learn everything, but it has been pretty stressful for me as a whole. That's um, good. And so you need to internalize that stressfulness and learn how to be better than it. And then you need to uh, learn all the things that you didn't get exposed to and didn't have enough time to practice now, but on your own. And now you've have the reassurance that if you can do boot camp, you can probably do anything. Well, uh, so your final day is on Thursday, July 11th. Is that right? Yep. It's just a few days away. Uh, so what, what are your plans for after the boot camp? So since this is like the last episode before officially we are de technically done with in boot camp, what are your plans uh, short, shortly thereafter? Short term? Uh, I'm just going to finish my React Udemy course I got and the computer science course I got on Udemy. And I'm just going to wait for the perfect job and I'm going to try to do more things on the side. Um, so one of my coworkers was just talking about like, hey, Matt, you, you could, could you do phone apps and stuff? Like, I got this really great idea and stuff. And I stopped and thought like, well, I wonder if I tried to be my own employer for a little bit. So worst case scenario, 
I get a cooler uh, profile, like uh, not a profile, like a portfolio of works and stuff. So that's worst case. Worst case, I just made a project for fun and I can show it off to the next employer. Best case, well, I make 50 bucks a month in ad revenue or something. For sure. That's great. Um, So no matter what, it's a win-win. And plus, I kind of think it would be fun to actually have a pseudo fake client. And I told him to his face I was going to Zuckerberg him if it makes money. I don't know if he knows what that means. No, he doesn't. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We, we'd be a team, is what he said. I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, that's, what, that's what it means to Zuckerberg somebody. And then he's like, no, 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 no. Like, uh, we'd share. And I, I just repeat myself twice. And I, just the same thing. Like, no, no, I would Zuckerberg you. That's, that's beautiful. I, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, so I would say that it's very difficult to do um, independent freelance um, when you're so early on and you have yeah. so little experience. Um, but I do encourage you to continue doing stuff on your own, especially practicing writing code on your own. And what I would say in, in what you've experienced during your group project is there's so many things that you don't know how to do, especially when you compound all of the things that you don't know how to do, what I suggest is focusing on one thing you don't know how to do and is specifically achieving only that thing. Everything else can be ignored, but you have to be able to do individual tasks successfully. Okay, so can we talk about this a little bit? So let's say I want to do a login system. Like, would you break it down to like just like the front end part, just the make a project so that the only thing you're doing is login. So, okay. you know, what so let's say you're just doing an express login. So like no react involved. So you're simply doing an express app with passport. You have handlebars to render some HTML pages with a login form. You click login, it redirects you to wherever, and now you can see the inside of the app that just says hello, you're logged in. You can click log out, which kicks you out, and if you try to go back to the old logged in route, it would kick you back out cuz you're not logged in anymore doing one small constrained example so that you get the experience for that. And then add something more complicated. Do G- JWT off with Passport and then link that up to React. Incremental progress where you're individualizing each task is really good for learning in this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's say I know how to do all this. Um, when you're working in the real world as a big pants developer, do you, is this how you start projects? Like, yep. do you just do one thing at a time or you do bet. you just kind of... If I don't know how to do it, that's what I do. Okay. Uh, something that uh, I often tell our junior engineers and our all of our engineers, really, is, hey, something's not working? Cool, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, here's what to do. Go make another starter project, you know, whether that be Spring Boot Initializer or another Create React app or another Express Generator, whatever the case might be. Just go make another one and try doing it there. Do just the just the feature that you're working on. Just try to do it in isolation. If it works there, we can port it over to the real app. No problem. I've never... Th- That's a great idea. And the reason for doing that kind of thing is complexity can be overwhelming. You can get hung up, as you found out. You should see my components folder. My components folder is huge. Exactly. So as, you, you, as you've seen, complexity can be overwhelming. You can get hung up on anything. And being hung up is not productive. Trying stuff is productive. And by extracting the work you need to do to something else that's much simpler and constraining the task at hand. So instead of seeing all of these folders and files, if you just see what you're supposed to be working on, you can focus much more specifically on that. Yeah. That's a good idea. I will be trying to do that later on today. Yep. So in the long term, you'll be looking for a, a perfect job. So let's let's explore that a little bit more. Uh, something not in downtown Minneapolis and something where I get to work hours I like. Um, I, I know it's a lot of places are nine to five, but I would really, really like to find a job that's like, you know, six to two or six to two thirty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure any job would let you do that. Yeah. So in, in our industry, in our in our software engineering industry, we usually have something called core hours. And so core hours means that basically you need to be available for meetings and phone calls and planning sessions and and client meetings and internal meetings for some set period of time during the day. And so that may be from, you know, 10 until two. Most meetings are going to happen in that window. 
whatever you do on the outside of that is usually irrelevant. Being in the metro area, I'm sure you know what happens during rush hour. And if you get to, if, I mean, if you have to be there at 6 and you leave at 5.30 in the morning, no traffic. If you leave at 2.30, traffic's kind of bad, but... Not not intolerable. So I, I often leave at 3 p.m. just so that I don't have to spend an hour and a half in traffic. And nobody minds. It's fine. Yeah. It just means when I get home, I just end up working for a couple more hours and it's not a big deal. Now, how many hours a week do you normally work? 40 hours a week. Okay. And then do you count the stuff at home? Yeah. It's always cool. And the dog counts all the time I spend with it. I'm sure your pup appreciates that. And that you leave the AC on for it. Yes, exactly. So this has been a good episode. Where can we find you on the internet? Oh, you can find me at MatthewPetro.com, and you can also find me on the People's tabs of the Nexus.tv. Excellent. And of course, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at RyanMar, and of course on my website, RyanRampersed.com. And you can find us on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the nexus where you can leave us a comment or if you're interested in boot camps you can talk to us about boot camps like lambda school and of course you can support us on patreon at patreon.com slash the nexus tv have a good one have a good one the nexus the nexus the nexus tv podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence, convergence.